Hello and welcome back. First of all, I would like to thank you for supporting me in doing this good job and reaching 1 million subscribers. What? Well, that's the goal. 1 million subscribers. If you like my videos and find them helpful, then please share them with your friends as well. And once again, thank you for watching it. In this video, we are going to see what happens during message 4. So, so far we have seen message 1, 2 and 3 of Ike Exchange. If you haven't already, then you can go back to my previous videos and go through them. So, we have seen initiator and responder. Initiator sends the first message of the communication and the responder sends the second packet. The initiator then sends the third message. So, this is what we have done so far. Just to give you a quick recap, in third packet, what information was shared? So it sends a key exchange payload, and it sends nonce, and then it sends NATD payloads. NATD payload will only be seen if NATD was enabled in first and second packet, then only it will do NATD, NAT detection, NAT discovery. I'll just get rid of this diagram. Message 4 is from responder to the initiator. After receiving third message, the responder now sends kind of all similar things back to the initiator. Like in message 3, we got key exchange payload, we got nonce, and NATD. Now the responder also sends back the same things, but its own calculated values back to the initiator. Look at them, let's look at them one by one. So key exchange payload, what goes into the key exchange payload? The key exchange payload contains Diffie-Hellman public key. If you remember from my last video where I discussed third message, the Diffie-Hellman is an asymmetric algorithm. It generates two keys. Like on the initiator end, we had A and XA. Likewise, here on the responder side, we'll have B and XB. So that's your Diffie-Hellman key pair where B is the private key and XB becomes the public key. Now it keeps the private key private, does not share it with anyone, but public key, as the name says, can be shared. If you go back to the third message, the initiator, when it sends the key exchange payload, it puts its own public key into that and sends it to the responder. Likewise, the responder will also send its public key to, to the initiator. So in the fourth packet, it sends the same parameters. One is key exchange payload in that it sends its own public key, the responder's public key. Next thing, it sends a nonce value and then it sends NetD parameters. How those NetD parameters are calculated? So it does the same calculation that was done on initiator end. We can take a look at it again. Before I go any further, I will request you to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And if you have already subscribed, then I would like to thank you for that. If you wish to get an instant notification when I post a new video, please do subscribe to my channel. With that being said, let's move on. So in NATD, it sends two NATD payloads. In those two NATD payloads, sends two hash values. Here, it will have um, hash of source IP and source port destination IP and destination port. Let's say in this case, the initiator's IP is 1.1.1 and the responder IP is 2.2.2, right? So because this this is fourth message, it will be from, resp from responder to the initiator. In that case, source IP is 2.2.2, source port is 500 because these messages are exchanged on UDP port 500. Destination IP is 1.1.1 and destination port is 500. So these messages are purely exchanged on UDP 500, both directions. Source port will also be UDP 500 and destination port will also be UDP 500. You have also seen, you have already seen that in the watch track capture and you will see it again. In that D, it, it sends two NATD payloads and it, in each of them, it sends these two hash values. So it calculates the hash of source IP with source port, destination IP with destination port. This hash 
algorithm which hashing mechanism to use that is decided in the first and second messes with the help of NAT T. When it negotiates NAT T, it decides which parameters we are going to use. If you do still do not have clarity about NAT T, you can go back to the first video and get understanding about NAT, how NAT T works, how it is exchanged, what parameters are shared. So these two hash values are calculated and they are sent in NAT D parameters. So let's say this hash value comes out to be ABC and this hash value comes out to be 1, 2, 3. So it sends two NAT D values as this kind of small, small packets puts ABC and 1, 2, 3. So one of them is the hash of source IP with source port and this is hash value of destination IP with destination port. So it sends these three values key exchange payload where it sends the public key of the responder sends nonce and sends nat d let's relate third and fourth messages so i'm going to put those things again initiator responder initiator sends the first message to the responder responder sends the second message initiator then sends the third packet in third packet initiator puts key exchange payload in this key exchange payload it sends uh, so these are the defi hellman keys a and x a on the initiator end b and x b on the responder end where this is private and x value is your the is the public key so initiator in third packet it sends key exchange payload in this key exchange payload it sends the public key of initiator the second thing it sends is initiator nonce n i this is a very large number random number generated using some mathematical technique and the third is NAT D in NAT D it sends hash values of source IP with source port and destination IP with destination port this is your third packet I'm gonna make it look like a bundle and then send it here after receiving the third message the responder then calculates its own fourth message where it puts the same things key exchange payload where it puts the public key of responder nonce it puts responder nonce and nat d it sends two nat d parameters again so it does its own calculation puts the source ip and source port destination ip along with destination port so it, this is the hash of these values that makes your fourth packet and sends it to the initiator okay let's take a look at the mm states initiator responder again when the initiator sends the first message after sending the first message is it goes into a state mm wait message 2 that means i have sent the first packet now i'm waiting for second packet to be received goes to the responder responder then sends the second message after sending the second message the responder goes into a state mm wait message 3 that means main mode waiting for message 3 i have sent the second packet and i'm now i'm waiting for third message so if you see your firewalls your ass's they are stuck at these stages you know what what that means in another video we will also discuss how what can be the problem if you see your firewall is stuck at mm wait message 2 what are the possibilities if you see your firewall is stuck at mm wait message 3 what can be wrong that's a matter for another video so for now after sending first packet it goes into a state mm wait message 2 main mode waiting for message 2 after sending second packet main mode wait waiting for message 3 after sending third packet the initiator goes into main mode waiting for message 4 after sending the fourth message the responder goes into a state mm wait message 5 that i've sent the fourth packet now main mode is waiting for message 5 to be received if you wish to get an instant notification when i post a new video please do subscribe to my channel